If you need to um, improve your verbal ability, which is generally a good thing, then read, write, speak. Understand that developing those abilities might be of tremendous use to you. You know, because it's one thing to live properly and that's not a trivial thing, but it's another thing to be able to articulate yourself and to be able to negotiate. And generally speaking, there's nothing about that that isn't advantageous. If you're going to speak about something, you need to know a lot about it. You need to know three or four times as much as you're going to speak about at minimum. So first of all, you have to do your background research. You have to have multiple stories at hand that you can use to illustrate your point. And you have to have a point. You have to organize what you're talking about around a problem. So before I go on stage to speak on my tour, I always sit for half an hour, some of which involves usually about five minutes of anxiety. And I think, okay, there's a problem I'm trying to address tonight, a central problem or a theme. What is it? It might be courage, it might be responsibility, it might be meaning. Um, I think, and that serves as an organizing principle. So that would be the point. And then basically I organize, say, a dozen stories around that. And I, I can kind of arrange them in it as a journey and it's a journey that circles the main point. And so I'm trying to explore it, to say what I think about courage, let's say, but to take what I'm thinking farther than I've taken it already. And so that I can plot out, you know, little five minute stories that I have that are associated with courage. And then I can talk to the audience. And I would say, talk about what you know, use your personal experience because that's, that's something that you're actually a master of. You can bring in other material, but it has to be tied to the real world through your own experience. Otherwise, it's not real. And the other thing I would say is you're telling stories. So every fact that you relate or every set of facts has to be tied to a story. There has to be a meaningful output, which is something like, why is it important to your life that you know this fact? How is it related to how you're going to conduct yourself moving forward or how you're going to see the world? So because that's kind of the essence of meaning. How does this fact change the way you perceive the world or act in the world? That's the meaning of the fact and facts without meaning are dull. So you need to know that you need to tell the truth. That's for sure. For me, my talks are really they're an attempt to explore a set of ideas in the most truthful way that I can manage. And that's also an adventure because letting yourself speak freely about a topic you don't always know where it's going to go and so but that also hooks in the audience because they're along for the ride right the talk should be a process of exploration like a journey that you're taking the audience along on um doesn't hurt to read really doesn't hurt to write you know a little bit of writing every day clarifies your thinking it's a hard thing to do and it's, it's an unlikely thing most people won't do it but you read you think, you write. The reason you write is because writing forces you to articulate your thoughts. It organizes your brain around whatever it is that you're writing about. And one of the easiest ways to write, there isn't any real easy way, but one of the easiest ways to write is to write down a problem. It's like, well, what's, what, what problem is bothering me? Well, you can write about that, first of all, to get the problem clear, because that's a hard thing. Then you start to write about what might possible solutions be. And you, you fight with those solutions because, you know, you want to kill off the stupid ones. And then, you know, maybe you need to learn to, to speak more fluently. Maybe you need to, you could try a class in improvisation. And, and maybe that's too daunting. You could join a speakers club like Toastmasters. Um, you could try talking more at dinner parties a little bit more once you formulate your thoughts. You have to be willing to be somewhat of a bumbling fool to begin with, right? Because you're going to not, if, and, and maybe you're better, your verbal skills are better than you think they are, you know, and you're just self-conscious. But you have to practice putting yourself forward a little bit. And tentatively, you can do a lot of that, you know, a lot of that initial learning how to interact with people, though by asking them questions about what they think and then responding instead of being too concerned about putting your own point forward. And even introverted 
and anxious people can learn to do that. You know, it's those are learnable skills. It's not easy, but you can manage it. You, you can also you can also speak carefully, you know, and listen to what you're saying and only try to say things that you think are true. That's also unbelievably useful. You have to feel that out. Like, is this really what I believe or am I putting it forward? Well, because I want to look good or I want to dominate or um, or I want to express obliquely an emotion that I'm too cowardly to come out and confront directly or am I being manipulative? There's lots of reasons that people use language. But what you really should use it for is to state what you believe to be true and then to let the consequences of that unfold. And so that can also help you. I mostly, I can think in images. And so if I'm building things, because I like to do carpentry and fix houses and that sort of thing. And so I like to build things. And if I'm figuring out how to build something, I can picture it. And so I can think in pictures, but I don't usually think in pictures. I usually think in words and I think pretty formally in words. Yeah, basically what you do, and this is really what you do when you think, is you, you know, if, if thinking is an internalized conversation, which at least is one form of thinking, is that you spin off avatars of yourself and you say, well, you take this position and you take this position and you take this position and then you have each fictional part of yourself lay out the argument and and argue it through and then you also have to have something to think about you have to be have been working on this material you know i've been working on the stuff i talk about for 30 years for tens of thousands of hours and so i have that reservoir of knowledge i suppose and you know whenever i read something new i'm slotting it into the knowledge structure that i use to generate my talks and i'm reading all the time and lots of the things i read I forget, they're not relevant to my central mission, whatever that happens to be. It looks like some it looks something like the delineation of the relationship between responsibility and meaning and and maybe responsibility, meaning and perception. It's something like that. And so I have a central concern, or deeper than that in some sense, um, my central concern was how to ensure personally that if I was tempted in a situation like the situations that arose in the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany that I wouldn't fall prey to those totalitarian systems and act in the re reprehensible manner that so many people acted in. That's really been a driving concern of mine. And, and that bleeds over into the relationship between meaning and responsibility and perception. So there's a core set of problems that I'm working on and every talk is an attempt to further develop those. So you also have to have a problem, you know? You think, well, you don't want to have a problem. It's like, yeah, you do. You want to, you want to, you've got problems anyways. <laughs> if you're alive, you've got problems. Pick one of them. It can be your problem. And that can be the problem you try to address, whatever that happens to be. And then you have something to talk about. How am I going to address this problem? How can this problem be addressed? So you need to have a problem too if you're going to talk, just like you need to have a problem if you're going to write, because the writing is an attempt to solve the problem. And so is the talking. If you're not trying to solve a problem, what the hell are you doing talking? Why should anyone care? It's got to be a real problem too, like a, you know, a nail biter of a problem, a dragon of a problem. And if, if it's a problem that everyone else shares, so much the better. So, and then you grapple with it.